Hello, welcome back to Truck Stop Murder and True Crime Pod. I am your host, Gary Howard. And I got a story for you this week. It's not necessarily a murder story like the past ones, but it still contained murder. This week, the road brought me... January 12th, brought me to Pilot Truck Stop in Wolcott, Iowa. Now, the, 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 the situation that I found today was in Iowa City, Iowa. But we'll get into that. But the truck stop that I'm at right now is actually a complex of a lot of truck stops. You get the pilot where I stayed at, and you also you have another pilot that's across the highway. And also, you have Iowa 80, which is supposed to be the world's biggest truck stop. Which it is a pretty big truck stop. I think it's more parking, if anything. It's Iowa, but I don't park there. Because like I said before, if you heard me before, I don't support TAs or Petros if I can help it because they are the greediest truck stop on the interstate they could have thousand parking spots but I guarantee you 80% of them you have to pay for and regardless how much fuel you can fuel up a whole fleet of trucks buy them all food stuff like that but then they you're still paying $15 to park there it just doesn't matter but Iowa 80 let's just see a little bit about them they have 900 parking spots even the food restaurants they have at these places they say they're like Burger King is TA ran so you don't get the deals like two for six whoppers that most places get because they're TA ran so that's why I was at the pilot car seat but now they do a Iowa 80 does have uh, if you want to see some cool trucks they do have some very a uh, big huge museum that has all the different you know re remodeled trucks from back to forever ago they have some cool items if you ever find your way going along i-80 going to walcott it's right there by davenport so if you come in from illinois it's about say 20 30 miles i would guess it's not too far as soon as you get if you come to the loop around these 280 let's see I could tell you right now, actually. Let's see, yeah, 280. If you're coming from Illinois around two, it's from 280. As soon as you get 280 going to I-80 West, it will actually be the next stop, North Plantation Plant View Drive. So let's talk about the truck stop I stayed in. It was a pilot truck stop, like I said. It's right there on I-80 exit 282. It's a decent sized truck stop. They have about 60 plus parking spots. You know, they got showers, Wi Fi, scales, all the things most truck stops have. But the reviews, pretty much, I'm not going through them all because they all pretty much have one thing they bitch about the showers, not hot water. Now, when I was there, I actually decided to get a hotel. I parked my truck there, but I decided, you know, I'm going to be here for a while, so I went and got a hotel across the street, so I didn't worry about the hot. I showered at the hotel. Now, for restaurants, they have a really good, I like it. It's called Grandma's Country, Grandma's Kitchen and Checkered Flag, which has a little bar to it, which is cool. And the food is really good. They have all kinds. They have a lot of specials there. A lot of times they have like all you can eat. Certain days fish. Stuff like that. But I like going on the weekends. Because they have a prime rib that is amazing. It's like 20 bucks for like a 14 ounce prime rib. With all the fixings. Salad bar. And it's real nice. The people are real nice there. But to the truck stop. Yeah. It's your normal your average pilot. If I gave it five. I didn't take a shower there. So I can't say if it had hot water or not. But it's a decent spot. They have beer there. But like I said, the restaurant right there, you have what other restaurants there? You have the where I like to go. Then it has Arby's, then Caribou Coffee, Blimpies, Orange Juice, Orange Julius, which is like I said, a lot of these places are in the the TA stuff like Wendy's. It might be Taco Bell, the Iowa A truck stop, which has a lot of different things there, Dairy Queen, which they they even charge you extra money because they say convenience of being a truck stop. Well, that's what the Iowa 
that's what the TA in um, Joplin, Missouri told me. I was like, what's this extra charge for? Because I had bought some Taco Bell there. They're like, well, it's just the extra charge for the convenience of us being in the truck stop. So, and there you have the truck stop where I was at. Like I said, it's the Pilot Center 43. Reason like I said, the parking lot's pretty good. It's all asphalt. And the address is 3500 North Plainview Road, Walcott, Iowa. And that's where I was at on January 12th, 2020. Which brings me to the case that I found. I wanted to do one case, but unfortunately, Small Town Murder had already did that. So if you ever is Iowa, I didn't. I should have got the city, but I didn't get it. But I, I made up my mind. I tried. I do. I'm a big fan of Small Town Murder, which has really got me into. Well, I was always into true crime. Eventually, I was. I have a lot of family members that I would like to cover on mine and my why side of the family who are were the receiving and giving in both sides of the situation which really got me into it so being with my wife we really got me introduced Desra really got me introduced to the whole true crime thing but when I really got into small town murder that's what really motivated me to do this and I made it clear that I will not do any cases small not that they're not good cases they're excellent you know cases if you really get a true crime but to respect to James and Jimmy I'm not going because yeah it'd be easy for me just listen to all of theirs and just do what they did but that, that's not me I want to do my own I want to be an individual and not a copier so here we go what I found there is the Iowa State University school shooting now I haven't I looked around I couldn't find really no other podcast who did that this so I was pretty happy about that but Iowa State University school shooting Gang Lu it happened on November 1st 1991 so Gang Lu was a 28 year old Chinese graduate student at the University of Iowa who had received his doctoral degree in physics and astronomy from the university in May of 1991 so he already got his doctor's degree and in 1980 in 1984 when Lu was oh well when Gang Lu I was going to call him Lu for now on so when I'm talking about Lu I'm talking about Gang Lu so Lu when Lu was 18 years old he began studying physics at Peking University in Beijing where he passed the CUSPEA exam and was admitted to the study in the United States becoming a graduate student at the University of Iowa. As a graduate student, Lou was primarily a loner who was perceived by a lot of people, you know, one other graduate, to have a psychological problem of challenge and was reported to have abuse of tantrums. You know, tantrums. Lou was infuriated because of his dis- discretions title study of critical ionizations first a bunch of crazy words of per, particle and stem stimulation did not receive the prestigious DC because you got the prestigious pre C and I'll try my best to spell, spell, say this word spiritually Bach but ST distillation well it's a big prize to all these you know fix and stuff like that who where they get where it's just the best of the best the creme of the creme with which also included and keep in mind this was 91 so this is quite a bit of money and which included twenty five hundred dollars mm-hmm yep which included a monetary award of twenty five hundred dollars so the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989 led a lot of many which I'm gonna get to that because in 80, you know, led many Chinese students to become eager to stay in the United States. Did not want to leave because the uprise of it. And I'll go over a little bit about Tiananmen Square if you don't remember that about that back in '89. Led many believed. So he believed that even though he had a doctoral degree, that but he did not have the money to means to a regular job. And with his field, it was hard to get a job at that. So Lou believed that winning the prize would have made it easier for him to get a job and not have to return to China. Normally, would Lou would have gotten a regular 
post postdoctoral research position, but that was he just didn't have enough money to support him. So I don't know if you all remember the whole Tenement Square, but I'm gonna be go over a little bit of it. So prior, to, even after this, in the months prior, well, I'm not going. I'm getting ahead of myself on that. We'll get to the shooting or what, stabbing or beating. Or, I don't know. We'll soon see what it is. So the Tenement, a little quick history about the Tenement Square. The Tenement Square protest was student-led demonstrations calling for democracy, free speech, and free press in China. They were halted in a bloody crackdown known as the Tenement Square Massacre by the Chinese government on June 4th and 5th, which June 4th is my sister's birthday, which I want to give a big shout out. If she listens to this, she really had some hard times. She was in which I'm, that's her business. I won't get to it, but she has really been successful in her birthday. Her name is Alta, Alta Diaz. She's down in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama, and she's got a nursing degree. She also too got a degree, but I don't think she got a doctor's degree. But she'll get there. She started her life. But yeah, that's when her birthday was. In, it's June first. So if you listen, Alta, hey, can't wait to see you. Come visit me. Okay, but yeah, pro-democracy protesters, mostly students, initially marched through Beijing to Tiananmen Square following the death of Hu Yangbang Hu, a former Communist Party leader, someone who was trying to get a democratic government, who was trying to really promote it. But a lot of these places, when they do try to change the course, Martin Luther King, John Lennon, anything that something goes against the pricks. So eventually, thousands of of people joined the students in Tiananmen Square, which the protest numbers increased in the tens of thousands. And so, and with that, it, it, I don't know. Tiananmen Square is kind of like the entryway; it's like a big square going into the main castle with all the packs. So that's where it's like being in front of the White House, I guess you would say. So the students also argue that Chinese. Here's the thing: where they like wanted to come to the United States because of the educational, because the students also argue that Chinese educational system did not adequately prepare them for economic systems with elements of free market capitalism. So, kind of, you know, keeping the sheep in order, you know. With some leaders within China's government were sympathetic to the protesters, cause while others saw them as a political threat. So there you go. So martial law was during this time. Martial law was declared on May 13. A number of student protesters initiated a hunger strike, which was inspired others a similar strike and protest against China. Like I said, I think I've actually went too long in this s subject, but I'm just trying to give you a little idea of why it was such a big deal for these you know students to come here. You know, because back then, you know, at the time there was very they were Yoko so back then there were few Chinese students compared to today I think in even in 1997 the earliest record available was like 340 Chinese students enrolled in University of Iowa and now today there's 2,797 students in, in Iowa so so at the time, like I was saying, Marshall was they started protesting with a hunger strike, which inspired others to simmer strike protests. Because China, as the movement grew, the Chinese government became increasingly uncomfortable with the protests they were seeing around the world, with the protests, particularly as the this this uh, mush 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 <laughs> disrupted a visit by Prime Minister Mikhail Gorbachev of the Soviet Union, which they were not happy with at all. So. While the intel, so what ended up happening was, while the intel pr presence failed to quell the protests of the Chinese authorities, decided to increase their aggressions. So at 1 a.m. on June 4, Chinese soldiers and police stormed Tiananmen Square, fired live rounds into the crowd. Although thousands of protesters simply tried to escape, each fought back, stoning and attacking. And, the troops and not the good type of stone, you know, setting fire to military vehicles, reporters, or Western diplomats, where they 
that that they estimated that hundreds to thousands. I mean, I keep hearing hundreds to thousands. Imagine that. It's hard to comprehend thousands just mowed down by the. the that would never happen in the United States. So when you're thinking well, how bad we have in the United States with our with Trump and all kinds of stuff, think about what it could be. And this, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into politics. This is not a political podcast. This is all about truck driving, traveling, and true crime. Maybe and murder, of course. But tens of thousands of protesters was killed in Tiananmen Square massacre. As many as ten thousand was arrested, so it was a big deal. So leaders worldwide, including Gorbachev, condemned the military action, of course. And less than a month later, the United States Congress vote to impose economic sanctions against China, citing human right violations, of course. With I, I don't think they would think that the United States was going to sit around and just allow this to happen. You just can't mow down unarmed citizens. They were clearly was um, what's that word? It was a peaceful demonstration. But other countries don't see it that way. So let's get back to our man Gang Lu. So Gang Lu was one of the type of people that he was really on top of things. It was his way or the highway. Very, you know, I would like to say he was kind of like Shelton. If you ever watch the Big Bang Theory like him, how he's right about everything. Even it meant make his professor look st- dumb. It doesn't matter. And he could never figure out why people don't see it his way. It's always his way to the highway. And goes back to the war where the person who actually got it, Shane Lin Hua, I think that's his name. That was the individual that actually got it. Which was before that the war even was even, you know, the competition even started, or before the war was even thought about. Gang Lu was actually a roommate with the Chan Chan Li. I'm calling him Chan Chan Lu Chan. So, but there were competitions, so they're always competing with each other. So. Once he won, it really upset him. And through this all, even before that, he was always trying to, you know, talk about black matter. He found, but the, the professor was not. If you ever, there's a movie out there that's called actually Black Matter. It's not a very good movie. I mean, it's decent. If you want to know the aspects about, I'll put the name of the movie in a note. But, um,. It tells you know a little bit about it how the professor was really feeling like he was being talked down to by Chen Li, and he kept telling him, that, "Dude, before you start sprinting, you need to start walking. Come in here and adapt." And I think that's what the issue was. Was if you go by the movie, Chen Li was really adapting to the American way of life and really trying to sell in where Gang Lu was still speaking you know Chinese and he was staying to his heritage and would not uh, you know change for that and so he was pretty upset about that so he did not get the prize so come November 1st 1991 on the Friday 28 year old honor student game believed a scholarship that went to like I said Chin Lee Hugh a rival student should have been given to him instead he believed, so he b- believed to use a handgun violence was a proper means of resolving the dispute. So uh, there, he, in the ni- May 1991, gang filed for, a, a, he got his gun, he, he received and purchased a handgun, Jai. So this is all premeditated. Then he spent the next several months trying to really focus in on, you know, aiming until he was alright, ready to go. And he continued to plan his revenge on his college physics department. So he knew who he wanted. You know, he he wanted X, Y, Z. He wanted this person because he was the one that was holding him back to not give it to him. He wanted this person because he had a person. And during time, he was always complaining to like different, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Human human resources, I believe. You know, HR, and they would just ignore him. They'd be like, I'll get back with you. I'll get back with you. And they just kind of blowing him off. So he went in there with Professor Gotts, who direct director of research, who gave involved in PhD, Professor Robert Bob Smith, who collaborated with Chris as part of research. So a gang appealed the scholarship award to Chan with Dwight Nicholson, with the chairman of the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the University of Iowa, who was confident that gang 
decision would be overturned. However, like I was saying, appeal was denied by the office and the vice president of academic affairs. So, since nobody wants to listen to him, didn't want to do it, Heath felt that he got the award and his other person got the award instead of him, which Heath really believed that if he, by doing this, by winning this award, that was... He was firm to stay in the United States. He would not go back. And like I was telling you, that's why I went to Tiananmen Square for a while. Because the life there was, it was still communist. It was a communist-ran country. And the students were, they were not, there's no opportunity there. So for him to win this and get this $2,500 with this over his head, Mark, that he was the best of the best, that he was guaranteed a really good job and he could stay here. So he went and took on the matters of his own hands. So around 3.40 that afternoon of Friday, November 1st, 1991, during its regular weekend meeting, gang abruptly stands up and while they're all meeting, stands up and leaves the meeting. He goes to the floor below to see if the Whiteson's office, which it was, he's there quietly working away. Gang returns to the meeting upstairs and enters the room, carries his hangar, which is a 38. Chris who the, the person I was telling you about was you know Professor Chris Gortz was sitting close to his door gang kills him with a shot to the back of the head so he did not even see it coming gang then assassinates his rival like I said the rival Chan Lin Hill Chan with a bullet to the forehead it will shatter his glasses as well as taking his life. By now, everybody else in the room is scrambling for cover or or a way out. So Bob attempts to crawl underneath the table. Gang takes two shots towards him and shoots him in the right hand and chest. Bob, cl so Bob, I'm gonna start calling these people by last names because the professor. Chris Gantz did this. Professor Robert Bob Smith, Dwight Nicholson, you know. But Bob claps to the floor and gang leaves the room, so he's gone. As he heads downstairs to go, remember, he was after that one person, too. Reloads the gun. He reaches the White's office, stands in the doorway, and fires a round in his head. So the next shot missed the mark, so gang fired another round in the White's head of the chairman. And Astromney, and he dies right at the desk. Then, gang then recalls he left Bob's about live upstairs. He rushes back upstairs into the meeting room two young scientists are crouched over bob loosening his clothes so they're trying to, they think that gang lee's already gone and you know talking to him it's like everything was a fight so when he came back from where bob was on the floor he then sees chris still sitting in a chair his head at an unnatural angle of course because he's dead gangs orders the two young scientists out the room at gunpoint he returns to bob and fires two bullets in their head to ensure chris and chan was dead he plugs two more, you know, make sure the job's done. Plugs two more bullets in Chris and one more in Chen. Kang then leaves the building, crosses the street, enters another building, and goes in the second floor where he talks with Maya Simpson, a young student working at, as a temp or for the vice president for academic affairs, T. and Clary, who was denied the scholarship. So he wanted this person too. Maya calls Anna out of the office and Anna talks to Gang briefly before he raises his gun and shoots her in the face. This is the person who denied the scholarship. What well, denied the, the scholarship and who denied his scholarship. Not the scholarship, but the, the award in the face. So Maya begins to stand up when Gang turns around and fires at her too. This is, I'm going to go a little bit more about Maya because she was actually not on the hit list she was just there she was just a bad wrong time place at the wrong time so Maya calls Annie out of her office and then like I told you shouts Maya begins to stand up when King turns and fires at her the bullet tears through her mouth and spine cord he reloads climbs into the climbs to the uh, what was I uh, I'm sorry got interrupted by somebody banging on my door I don't know I don't know if you all heard that or not okay you never know who's at these truck stops you know I went, was at the one in St. Louis not too long ago and that is lot lizard haven I've never messed around with them or nothing like that in fact last time I was there I was 
but I was actually on my wife when they started all start begging on my door. But yeah, that's the only place I've been driving a truck for five years, and they're talking about lot lizards and drugs and stuff like. But I've never seen none of that stuff. I think in Waco I might have seen one lot lizard. I'm not for sure, but in, in East St. Louis. So if you're into that stuff, go to East St. Louis right there by the the racetrack. There's a pilot truck stop there. If you want some lot lizards, there you go. Touchdown. Maya begins to step back where I was at before I was interrupted. So Maya begins to stand when gang turns or fires on her. Of course, a bullet through her mouth. But he reloads and climbs to the top of the stairs and begins to hear the shouts, the sounds of police. So he enters her empty conference room, takes his jacket off, and then kills himself. No justice for nobody. Twelve minutes after he fired the first shot, Maya was left quadriplegic. So poor girl. So they got there, and like I said, they. With all this being said, because he did not get the award that he thought he deserved, they, like I said, he was a really narcissistic person. Thought that everybody was doing him wrong. I had a relative that was like that. No matter what, you're always right. Everybody's always doing you wrong, and you just sometimes maybe that was my my issue too when I was in the military. A lot of people say you just gotta adapt. You gotta adapt. You just you just don't get it. I guess that's why I made E five sergeant. But as for any more of that, I just don't think I would have, I would have made it because I just think it got it into me being ass kisser. I guess that's why I'm a truck driver because. I work by myself as long as I get my job done. I nobody everybody leaves me alone. Don't work good with others. So but the mess T so let's listen to these name these people. So count himself T and Clary which later on she survived the initial you know attack but later on she went to the hospital and ended up taking her off of life support after a while she am dying at the hospital later on. Chris K. Corrents was the professor. He was Chan Lin Hill, Dwight R. Nicholson, and Robert Bob Allen Smith were the victims of the showing on location with, like I said, TM and then poor Maya. So, a little, you know, a little bit more. So, the four men were killed. All right, all members of the Department of Physics Astronomy. So there, he knew who he wanted. Yeah, you know, anybody who was involved in any way, you know, denying him this ward was getting shot. So died shortly after. They were shot in the head. The investigator said that Christopher J. Gorch, 47, Professor of Physics Astronomy. Let's talk about them. Dwight R. Nicholson, 44, Professor and Chairman of the Department. So. Robert Allen Smith, Associate Professor of Physics and Astronomy, and Mr. Shan, a research investigator in physics and astronomy who came to university in 1989. And back to the fifth victim, like I said, vic- fit, the fifth victim, T. Ann Clary, 56, Associate Vice President of Affairs, Academic Affairs, died of her wounds later on that afternoon. And here's the person, you know, I feel bad for all these people, you know. It should have never came down to this. Some people just need to learn how before they take action. Maybe talk to somebody. Even though it was ninety one, that's when pe- they started to really know it's mental affairs. You know, mental illnesses, different things like that. They can be helped, and people start taking them seriously. I believe. So the sixth victim, Mia Randolfa Socian. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that name right. Maya. Randolfa is Maya M I Y A. I know how that's right, but Randolfa R O D O L F O slash S I O S N. She was a here's her story. She was in, like I said, wrong place at the wrong time. She was a 20 year old receptionist in Mrs. Clary's office. Her critical condition, when we, of course, she was in critical hospital spokesman said that there was no identification that she was. Intended target, of course not, because she didn't do nothing. She was just there as an intern. Students were drawn to the classrooms by the shooting. Well, blah blah blah. We won't go into that. So let's get a little bit about Maya, which I like. I said I'm gonna go a little bit over her, a little bit some some of the things that I found about Maya. So, 
Maya was born in the Philippines in 1968 and raised in Amis, Iowa. Following the death of her father, Maya and her three older brothers were raised in a single parent home by her mother. So she's having a hard time. Maya attending college. Well, who knows? She might have been living good. But single mom, you know, her dad died. There's a lot of mouth to feed. So there's a lot of burden to bear on her mom. Maya attended college at the University of Iowa, where she became interested in Central America. So on November 1st, 1991, physics graduate student gang went on a sh- course where I've been talking about shooting rampage, killing five, and Jeremiah, and turned the gun on himself and killing himself. So which, like I said, left her a paraplegic. 1996, Maya moved to Berkeley, Berkeley the birthplace of disabled the right movement. So she's not just sitting around... And just moping, moping for herself. She's trying. The movement's going on. So she dedicated her life to advancing the rights of disabled professionals professionally. Maya worked with a student exchange organization coordinating the home stays of students from Spain, France, China, and Charlia, Australia. Additionally, Maya edited the book The Peace Corps and More, a guide working and studying abroad. A guy too working studying bar. So she's writing books. She's helping the disabled. She's doing what she can from her paraplegic seat. So Maya attended college at the university where she became interested, like I told you, where she unfortunately, but sadly to say, she so Maya, long advocate for disabled rights. You know, and let me go back to this. She was graduated. She was so, but unfortunately. She and here's the part where she she lived through the school shooting. She you know became a paraplegic, but unfortunately, long time advocate disabled to rights. She ended up having she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So Maya was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer. So after 18 months of battling the disease, and sadly Maya passed away on December 3rd. 2008 which I know about breast cancer that's one thing that in my family runs rapid you know so first time it hit my family if you want to know is my aunt Shirley she passed away in 97 of breast cancer following that my mother passed away of 2005 of breast cancer then happy my aunt June Leona June she she got it but luckily for her she, I mean she they caught it in time so she was able to survive which is very good I'm happy about that but now we know that it runs in our family but anyhow there you go the poor families of the victims of the five and Maya who survived the shooting and all that was just in the wrong place at the wrong time survived the shooting surprised survived gang Lee's rampage but end up getting end up dying of cancer hopefully through her works and the disability that she did bring some recognition to that so only time will tell but like I said the poor victims of T. Ann Clary Chris K. Koretz Chan Lin Yu which in the movie they actually had him change his name to more adapt you know say darker matter and Dwight R. Nicholson and Robert so this is actually this is something that actually during this whole time while this was going on he was actually writing letters home to his family and right before he did this he had actually read wrote a letter to his sister stating what he's going to do and I'll read that to you I'll try to be quick but no, I'm not going to read this. I'll I'll post this. I'll take a picture of this and I'll post it on my Facebook page. It was Truck Stop Murder Truck. And you can read it for yourself. So, but pretty much say shortly after attacking, you know, he wrote his letter. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Why not? He wrote this. How are you? Please deposit and close check in the ba- bank sp- speedily. The letter is written especially to you, so don't let other people in the family see it. When you read this letter, I probably no longer in the world living. Now, keep in mind, this was translated from Chinese to English, so it might sound a little kind of crazy. So, but that's just the translation of how some languages translate a little different. So, I'll live world living. 
have already mailed some things back which can be considered to shoot on my legacy legacy I think there was a long as you explained to the customs officials they will let things pass through just as I th bring them here what I'm am most worried about is that our parents they are old and I'm afraid that they will not be able to bear the terminal but I am at the end of my resources see so this heavy responsibility must fall upon your shoulders I beg you take care of them and spare no expenses in effort moreover don't spend any money on my funeral for me all my and by all means don't come to us to take my body home the best things would be let the Chinese in this city be able to put the burn on someone else and <laughs> have my body cremated here in the USA and just some back ashes back home keep firmly in mind that you should not let anyone here in the US blackmail you, blackmail you into paying anything I think the money I have sent back will suffice to pay our parents loving kindness and raising me and gentle care of my two older sisters gave me when I was young last night when I finished talking to you on the telephone I wet my heart out here alone for the life of me I can't swallow all this you know that all my life I have been honest and straightforward and I'm most devastated coming frowning well well you know I'm not gonna read all this he just pretty much repeats himself what was me what was me you know these people are difficult to deal with you know some people say this some people say that nobody knows what but it ends off with another thing in the world here's how it ends and another thing in the end it would be best not to let the younger generation or our family know how it really was with me for it might be disadvantages to the futures future like his life I'm not gonna go there my beloved old sister I'll take care of you internal leave you I take my internal leave of you your younger brother well there you go there's gang Lu and the University of Iowa shooting so if you like that story hopefully I'm, I know I start to do it a few times I'm still learning this is a work in progress and if you are listening to it thank you and if you what you can do if you do like it go to Apple pod Apple the purple icon I guess some people call it go to iTunes please give me a five-star rating rate review and subscribe or go to any of them to stitcher I, I, I put mine because I have two, actually two of them on CastBox because that's one I listen to my podcast on and I submitted it there. But unknowingly, when I went to my podcast host where I submit my podcast to be distributed to all the different other podcasts, I wasn't aware they actually did CastBox as well. So I have two of them there, but I monitor both of them. I monitor all of mine. So if you want to interact with me, you know, you could get a hold of me. Uh, my email at GaryHoward290 at gmail.com or you can follow me or join my group on Facebook at Truck Stop Murder or Instagram at the same as Truck Must Stop Murder. You could do that. And where was I at? I get so tongue. I need to slow down. <laughs> but you can follow me. Write me on all of them. Still like that. Until next week, thank you for listening. And before I, I gotta give my special wife a big shout out because without her, this would not be possible. And my lovely wife, Desra Glover, thank you, Desra, for being you. And as always, I want to thank Jimmy Wisman for being my motivation to doing this and Dan Cummings. And for some reason, I want to thank the high priestess of the Time Suck Podcast, Harmony Velocamp, for just being you. All right. Thank you for listening. You Sergeant Awesome. Out. Thank uh -huh.